Hello and welcome. My name is Brad Miller. I'm the founder of RuneStone Interactive and a professor at Luther College. And this is the second in a series of videos on the new instructor's interface to the RuneStone Interactive textbooks. So in part one of this series, we covered kind of the main instructor's page, uh, everything under this admin section here. And in this, in this uh, video, we're going to cover the Assignments tab. So if we click on the Assignments tab, uh, you can select from a series of assignments that you've already created if you want to go back and modify or edit an assignment that you've already made. But in our case, uh, let's go ahead and create a brand new all right, so this is our uh, demo video two assignment. And if we click on the create button, uh, you'll notice that it fills in a couple things here. Uh, so it fills in the, the due date as a week from today. Um, total points is null. That should maybe say zero. Uh, and then you can type in the description. This is a sample uh, assignment. And then we can just click save and that'll save the assignment out to the database. Now, there are two parts uh, to our assignments. There's a reading part and a problem part. And the reading part is brand new and we're really excited about that because in the reading assignment, what you can do is you can uh, select sections of the interactive textbook that you want your students to read in order to be prepared uh, for the next class. So let's say we're at the beginning of the semester here. So we're in the introduction chapter. And let's say for uh, next week, we want our students to read sections one, two, three, and four of the textbook. So it adds to this reading section um, an entry for each one of those subsections in the in the in that chapter But here's where it gets cool and we can make use of kind of the power that we have in an, in an interactive textbook So you'll see we've got this activity count column here And so that means that in each one of these chap sub chapters of the book there are six activities that a student could do, whether that be a multiple choice question or a fill in the blank or an active code or a code lens. There are six kinds of things that a student can interact with. Actually five plus one for actually reading the text. All right. So that's the number of activities that are there. Here we can assign points for each one of these subchapters. So we can actually give automatically give points for students for doing the reading assignment and interacting with the book. So let's say that I want to give five points to each one of these, uh, each one of these sections. So I just click on it. I can put in a number, hit the check mark there to save that. Okay. So essentially, I've assigned 20 points for a student to do the reading. Now, how do we know how many points we should give the students? So. We know what the activity count is, and we can set a threshold here in this number required column to say in order to get these five points for the general introduction, all a student basically has to do is open up that, that uh, section of the book and hopefully read it. Um, we don't have to mark it as done. We'll, we'll grade it just by the fact that they, that they opened it up. All right, in the algorithms chapter, there are three activities and we're saying a student should do at least two of them. All right, if we want to change that, we can click on it and we can set that to be three out of three out of three to force the student to do them all. Maybe in this section, we don't, uh, we don't mind if the student only does three out of four and four out of six. So we kind of set, we kind of set a threshold automatically for you at about 80%, right? All right, so then we can set uh, two other fields, uh, the auto grade field, basically for reading assignments that is set to inter to interaction. And that's our only option at this point, all right? Which means all we're looking for is did the student go out and actually do something? Did they, did they interact with the, with the widget? 
Like for an active code, that means they had to press the run button at least one time um, on the active code. All right. Now we can also say, how should this be graded? And here we have three different options. Uh, we have best answer, last answer, and first answer. And for, our, for a reading assignment, I like best answer because uh, we're basically interested, um, did the student like get, get the thing right, choose the right answer at some point while they were interacting with the page? Okay. So this is set up the reading portion of the assignment. Next, let's say that we also want to add some other problems, some programming assignment type problems to this question, to this assignment. All right. So we can do that in a couple of ways. Um, and we'll just take the simplest one here first. This isn't going to make any sense um, from an educational perspective, but uh, let's just go look at a couple of these. Uh, down here. So we'll go to the, the other chapter and we'll go to the exercises section here and let's say, oh I don't remember, but if I click on one of these we can see a preview of it. Nope, that's not the one I was thinking of. Ah, here's the one that I was thinking of. I want to be able to have the student uh, compute the area of a, simply ask you for the width and the height and compute the area of the rectangle. So we'll assign that. Uh, what else might we what else might we have here and oh yeah everyone's favorite uh, convert Celsius to to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius so now we've assigned two programming questions to this assignment as well all right there's a couple other ways that we can add problems we can go to the search mechanism here we can search uh, by any chapter although it's a little easier, I think, to find it under that nice tree view. We can do a search for a term. So if we wanted to say, find any problem that was about recursion, we can search for problems about recursion and we can see those problems listed down here below. The other way that we can do it is we can write our own problem and this deserves its own video. So I will come back and make a full video about how you go about writing a brand new question of your own design um, and adding it to the assignment in, a, in another video. Okay, so those are the basic ways that we can, that we can add. Uh, we can modify the points since these are programming assignments. Let's give each of these 10 points. All right, and as far as auto grading goes, um, many of our many of the the, pro, the programs or the the exercise the programming exercises that we have um, can be auto graded because we've added unit test uh, capabilities uh, but I know these two don't have any so we'll just go ahead and set the grading type here to manual which will make the auto grader ignore it and again we can choose best answer or we could choose last answer for either of these. So let's choose last answer. All right. Uh, one thing I didn't show you before, if we add if we add a question like this and later we decide we don't want it, uh, we can delete it like this and we can also drag and drop things to change the order that we might want the exercises to appear for the students. Okay, so we've got our assignment. We've got the four sections in the book they want it, that we want them to read. We've got these two programming problems that we want them to do. And that's all set up in the database. So now you might be wondering, well, how do my students see these assignments? All right, so let's go back to the table of contents. Notice we've got this assignments link here at the very top of the table of contents. If we click on that assignments link, you'll see that we've got this nice list of assignments. We can see the name that we gave to each assignment. We can see the due date uh, for that assignment and then a little description of it. And then if we click on, so this is the one that we just made here. If we click on that one, we'll see, aha, here it is. Here's our assignment. There are 40 points possible. Here's all the things that we're supposed to do as far as reading goes. And a student can see whether they have uh, started 
that reading or the green check mark would indicate that they've actually clicked the completed button at the end of that section. Here's the programming problems that we've assigned them. And if they want to work on those, they just click on the show code button. Um, I did this one earlier, right? So uh, I, have, I have my code here. I can click save and run and enter a width, enter a height. Oh, but I got an error. So let's clean this up, right? We need to convert our values. We'll just say we're entering integer values. So I'm entering, um, converting them to ints. Save it and run it again. Five, five, and sure enough, we get 25. All right. So that's the, uh, that's the assignment building interface. That's how your students will see their assignments. Once you've graded them, uh, which we'll cover in another video, the students will be able to see the grade that they received on each one of these, along with any comments that you might have made on their programming parts of their assignment. So pretty excited about this, um, especially I'm, I'm really excited to use the, the reading assignment portion uh, to see if I can, uh, by assigning some points, um, actually get my students to kind of do, the, do their readings ahead of time, um, which should make class time a lot more efficient and a lot more fun uh, because we can be working on, on projects and answering questions rather than uh, giving them basic materials. Okay, so thanks for listening. Um, again, if you're interested uh, in the grading interface or in writing your own questions, I'll be uh, publishing shortly uh, additional videos, or maybe they'll already be published by the time you see this, additional videos on using the grading interface, um, looking at student progress, and writing your own uh, questions to add to an assignment.